Hi guys, it's Jordan from PP Campus. Just going to see your hand a video on your Bromo Home High Low. <coughs> it's a 2008 model, 58. And under the bonnet, um, we've got your engine coolant down on the left hand side. Power steering fluid in this reservoir just here above that. The brake fluid attached to the servo just down the back there. Engine oil gets topped up through here. And you can see down there, nice and clean on the top of the rockers. I can put that back on properly. Uh, <laughs> typical. All right, I'll put that back on. Oh, there you go. Right, so you've got your um, washer fluid just here. Uh, the cap is just going to go back on in a minute. Engine oil dipstick is this year. orange topped one just down here. The turbo sits at the front of the engine just here, so just be careful if you have had the engine running for any t any period of time. Just try and be really careful around this section here. Uh, this side shouldn't get too hot because it's the inlet side, but obviously this cut this side will get very 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 hot. Um, uh, your engine battery is this one just here to the right of everything there. Um, so that's your starter battery, and then other than that, you've got some fuses and relays and things under here, um, and that should really be about all you need to know under the bonnet on the passenger side you've got your bonnet release handle just inside there the red one and when you flip open this passenger seat here like it is now you can then get to a few different bits and pieces um, so you've got a few relays and fuses just inside there that will all be to do with the motorhome um, because it's some sort of split relay stuff um, you've got a 240 volt isolation switch and a the actual battery charger when your hookup's plugged in is that one just there the leisure battery sits inside this box just here so if you ever needed to get to that you can get to it just from there nice and easily and having the seat folded up like that gives you a load of space to get in there nice and easy to work on if you ever needed to for any reason the electric hookup is this one just here Behind that, we've got your gas locker. So you've got a Camping Gas 907 bottle in here. So that's the bigger version of them. Um, so turning the bottle on is anti-clockwise around to the left, turns it on, and turning it off is clockwise around to the right. I'm gonna leave it on for a minute because I've got a few bits working on the inside to show you. Um, you've got a Classe regulator. Um, and to be honest, you don't need to know anything about that apart from uh, this bit here is where we do our testing from, but that's you know, that's all you need to know really So that is the gas locker At the back there was a few little bits of paint which I have touched up because we did happen to have the correct paint color So this was all completely sort of missing its paint basically. So that's all been done. Same at the bottom I will get inside the vehicle in a minute and show you uh, the majority of the stuff um, in there, but I'll just go around the outside first, make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, so the fridge sits just here. You've got two sort of vents for this. This little bit just down here um, is actually because the fridge needs a little bit of air to get to it um, inside there. When you have the fridge lit up on gas, you should be able to feel a little bit of warm air coming out through this little bit just here, and I can. So that's just proving to me that the flame is definitely working. This locker here is all to do with your um, diesel heating and hot water system. So this is your Eva Spatcher tank here. And you can see the control module, etc. Um, you don't really need to know anything about that to be fair, that you don't actually have to do anything with it, but uh, I will show you how it works when we get on the inside in just a minute. Fresh water inlet is this one up here at the top. Now make sure you don't get that confused with the diesel filling point down here. Um, you can know that it's definitely the fresh water inlet because it hasn't got the ignition key to unlock it. Um, so if I just get the keys out. So this actual physical ignition key is the only key which will unlock your fuel filler cap down here. All right, and it's the only one that will put it back on. Whereas the, the fresh water inlet the ignition key won't do anything at all. All right, so you need to make sure that you do not put, <laughs> don't put water in there or diesel in there. Make sure that it's fresh water at the top and diesel at the bottom. 
inside the cab. It's got a few nice bits and pieces. Uh, so you've got 65,000 miles. Um, obviously it's a diesel vehicle. Hazard warning lights from the center button just there. You can lock and unlock the cab from just here as well. Your windows going up and down are these two switches just here. You have got air conditioning, which is always really nice as well. You've got the factory fitted clear on uh, singled in head unit there, so that's all standard. And all of your sort of heater controls down there. Um, another thing that's a little bit strange um, on these Citroens is that the right hand mirror, the one that you can actually get to, is a manual adjusting mirror. So if I move this little joystick around, you can see the mirror moving. All right, so that's a manual adjusting one. If you want to adjust the left-hand mirror, the passenger side mirror, you've got this little adjustment down here, this one here, and that will basically move the mirror for you uh, electronically. Why they didn't fit, you know, I mean, I suppose it is easy enough to just grab that one there, but, uh, you know, they could quite easily have just fitted an electronic one for both sides, but, um, but there you go. Um, that's what that is, just in case you were wondering. Uh, the lights are on the left-hand stalk here, and your fog lamps, washers and wipers on the right-hand side, and you've got some radio controls just down here if you wanted to use those, although it is pretty close to you to just use it directly from there. So, in the actual vehicle itself, I'm going to start off by showing the control panel up here. So it's a Zig unit. So it's a Zig Mark One, and so basically it's pretty simple how it actually works. Um, you've either got, if I get that out of the way, so you've got car or caravan down here, uh, and now it's it's as simple as um, let me get that hair out of the way. So. If you want to use the vehicle and you want to use your lights and things like that, so we've got the lights on there. If you want all that sort of 12 volt power stuff to work, you need it down here on caravan. So the caravan one is basically telling the vehicle to use the leisure battery to power up the pump, the lights and the auxiliary power. If I go back to the middle and up to car, which I'm not actually gonna do, but if you do that, you'll basically be telling the car battery or the engine battery to power up these things. So. You either want it down here on caravan if you want to use it or in the off position back to the middle once you've got it on caravan you can then turn these three on and that'll give you access like i said to all of the lights uh, the water pump will turn on etc so anything 12 volt powered will come to life next to that we've got your e-dispatcher control unit now this is just as easy um, all you need to know is that you push once to the left for the hot water only and once to the right for the hot water and heating. So you can literally just leave that alone and it'll get hot water and heating going. Um, the only thing you do need to make sure of, I'll just turn that off for a sec. The only thing you do need to make sure of before you start using that, because you can only use it on hot water, you can't basically not use the hot water. If you want to heat the van up, the hot water will be on as well. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you've got some fresh water in the tank at all times, really. Um, so all you need to do, make sure there's some fresh water in the tank and come over to the sink here and just make sure that there's water coming through the hot side of the tap. So if I just do that, so we can see there there's hot water, well, there's water coming through the hot side. We can turn that off and I can be sure now that I can go ahead and use the Eva Spatcher unit. If I turn that dial and no water came out through the hot side just there, that pretty well, pretty well proves to me that there's no water in the in the uh, in the boiler there, uh, and then that's when you shouldn't really be using it. So just literally just checking that. Turn your pump switch on. Make sure there's water at the hot tap, and then you can go ahead and use this exactly as you want to. Um, the two burner hob and grill is pretty simple. All you need to know is you've got an ignition switch just here and that does the ignition for the two burners and the grill. The grill door needs to be open when you use it, but that's all pretty self-explanatory stuff, really. Um, <coughs> the fridge, let's get down here in this little gap. <laughs> so the fridge, I've got that lit up on gas, like I said. Um, now the way to you actually light it up on gas is if I just switch this off for a sec, the ignition switch has started flashing at me. That's telling me that the ignition's going again, 
which means that the flame has gone out. So to light this up, make sure that you've got your gas on in the locker, turn your ignition switch on, you can hear it clicking and you can see it flashing. And then all you need to do, keep your eye on this when you're doing it, push in on this one and round to the left so that the little flame symbol meets up with the triangle. So let's just do that. Ignition switch stopped flashing straight away. I can now let go of this. <clears throat> and as long as that ignition switch stays off or stops flashing, we can know that it's definitely lit and working. The other way to check that is inside the actual fridge itself. You've got a little peep hole, which you should be able to see a little blue flame inside of, although it has got a little bit condensated because it's been lit up for a little while. So actually you can't see it on the video. I can see it in person, but you can't quite see it on the video. Um, but that's where you could check that or going around to the outside and putting your hand over that vent where I showed you. That's another way of checking. Um, but yeah, so we can turn the fridge off just by turning this dial back to where it was and then turning the ignition switch off. And that is it. So that's how you use it on gas. The gas is one of the two ways that will get this fridge cold by itself. So the gas is a really good way of using it. If you don't have gas or you want to use it on the electric, all you have to do, turn the green switch to on and leave it. So the green switch is for when your hookup cable is plugged in um, and it's the only other way that this fridge will get cold by itself. So you can either cool the fridge down first by having the hookup plugged in and using the green switch or turning your gas on and lighting it up on gas. Once you've got it cold and you want to drive off and get to where you're going, if you want the stuff inside the fridge to stay cold, you need to press the 12 volt switch just there. And that will basically just keep the fridge cold whilst you're driving. And there's that. So, um, the only other bits I really need to show you, um, oh, actually there's one thing. So just down here, there's a little 240 volt isolator and it says on it, 240 volt fridge switch. So if you did want to use the green switch there when your hookup was plugged in, you need to make sure that little green, that little isolator switch there is switched on. Um, the fresh tank is that one just there, like I said. And your um, trip switches for the mains are just down there as well. So if you did have any trouble in the future with getting anything to work on the mains, you can have a little look down there and make sure they're in the upright position. Um, yeah, so I've had to make a bit of a mess with the cushions to get to all of that stuff just to show you, but uh, that's why it's all like that. Uh, the blinds and things like that, they're all the same. Squeeze these two together to lift the bottom part up and just pull the middle bit down there for getting the uh, fly screen down. Windows, they've all got a little button on them. Push the button in and then they'll open up rather than just yanking on them because they will break. Pushing it out, you can then let go of it at any height that you want. And that is about it really. Um, so I know it's been a bit of a short video, but there's not a huge amount to go through in this van, to be honest. Um, if there is anything you think I've missed out or anything you'd like going over again, just let us know. Uh, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van. Thanks very much.